There's a certain charm about Borderlands 1 that's hard to understand if you haven't played it. You could look at some gameplay and be like, oh, that's just your standard first person looter shooter with a color palette made entirely from three different shades of brown, and you would be exactly right. But there's something about the combat and progression that's just special. The gunplay is enjoyable, but it has a decent element of strategy to it, so it's not only up to the player's skill, but their knowledge of how the world around them works. For example, Skags take bonus damage if you shoot them in the mouth, uh, enemies with big shields can be whittled down with electric damage, and even these badass looking armoured guys just straight up disappear if you hit them with the caustic element. It's just a blast to explore and fight in an innovative, apocalyptic wasteland, all while you grow stronger and progress in the game's story, however bland that story can sometimes be. I absolutely tore through this game and went straight on to its DLCs, you know, hoping they would give more of the content that I had grown to love in the base game. But here is where I get to the topic of this video. You see, three of these DLCs are pretty okay, like you got the zombie one, the robot one, and then you got that one where you spend most of it driving around on motorways, you know, all, all pretty standard stuff here. But the fourth DLC that I failed to mention is one of the worst things I have been subjected to in my entire life, and it goes by the name of Mad Moxie's Underdome Riot. So forgive my lengthy introduction and allow me to demonstrate what makes this DLC a chore to play and overall an absolute piece of shit. So you know what the best thing about open world games is? The open world part. So tell me, after making a successful and interesting first DLC for Borderlands, what do you think Gearbox decided to do next? They proceeded to shove the players into a playpen and lock the doors. Unlike all of the other DLCs in the game, Mad Moxie's Underdome starts you in a small, closed off box. Oh but don't worry, you can leave this box and go into three slightly bigger boxes. And that's it, that, that's the whole area they made for the DLC. Compared to any other part of Borderlands, this location kind of feels like a jail cell. Now, when you start a DLC and your first thought is, what did I do wrong to deserve being here? It's generally not a great sign for the DLC, is it? Like, I get it, the DLC didn't need a big space, because it only needed to fit the arenas. Because that's the big appeal of the whole thing, right? You don't have to go around and find enemies to kill, you can just play here and they'll come right to you, and I would totally, totally take this as an excuse if it didn't also go out of its way to suck the life from the game's combat. Let me clarify, in Borderlands when you kill enemies you get general XP that lets your character level up, this lets you get more perks on your skill trees and it also increases your weapon proficiency which gives you a bunch of nice bonuses like extra damage, better accuracy, etc. On top of all of this, enemies drop loot when you kill them. A good portion of that loot is certainly useless, but every now and then you'll get something pretty sweet that's better than what you own, and you get that feeling of satisfaction, knowing that you just got stronger, and then there's that excitement to try out your new gun or your new grenade mod or whatever. In Mad Moxie's Underdome Riot, all of this is gone. Enemies give you no XP, they drop absolutely no loot, and they've even made it so your weapon proficiency doesn't go up when you use your gun. But I, I have to be honest here, now when I said there was no reward, I was actually exaggerating. The reality is actually way worse. After every round, the game vomits up literally some of the worst guns you can possibly find in the game. They are consistently terrible. Like I honestly didn't know there were weapons this bad in Borderlands before I played this DLC. Now, when you're playing a game, and are getting nothing to mark your progress, it brings you to doubt yourself and has you asking, why am I playing this? Why am I doing something better with my life? What the hell is wrong with me? So if Gearbox's goal was to make me doubt my life choices, I think they actually nailed it. Great work guys. I was actually just complaining about being too happy playing video games. The arena challenges themselves are just downright awful. The landscape for each of them is just old maps from the base game mashed together. 9 out of 10 of the surprise modifiers they added to try and spice it up just make one weapon type strong uh, and make every other weapon type absolutely useless. 
Now, there's two different types of arena challenge. There's the smaller, boring one, and the I hate myself and whoever I'm playing with one. Now, the smaller challenge only consists of five rounds. So if you're playing with a friend or two and have good guns, this challenge will be a cakewalk. The toughest part is stopping yourself from losing the will to play and just closing the game. The bigger I hate myself challenge goes on for a whopping 20 rounds. That translates to a minimum of 2 hours of rewardless combat. The challenge starts off easy but the difficulty does rapidly ramp up. If you have an experience like my friends and I did, you'll breeze through it until about round 15 and suddenly find you just can't progress anymore, so you quit. Now, keep in mind, there are no checkpoints in this game mode. So every time you leave the arena, you have to start again from scratch. That means, if my friends and I wanted to try again, we'd have to play for an hour and a half just to get back to round 15. But thankfully, after losing the first time, we did what any sensible gamers would do and uninstalled Borderlands. Now, a good counter argument to try and validate this DLC's existence would be to say that it's for late game players who have achieved all that they can in the game and are looking for a good challenge. But to that I say, no. This does not validate this DLC's existence. This is the second DLC that they released into the game. I was over leveled for most of the campaign and the first DLC, but this, which was the very next thing I had to do, and should do, chronologically, failed to find the middle ground between unbelievably easy and borderline impossible. You either feel like you're bullying inexperienced bandits, or you're in way over your head, and it is so, so hard to find the in-between here. And yeah, maybe it is for late game players, but you know what would just be a fantastic idea if they had either released it last or on the side as some bonus content for dirt cheap, not at the same price as all the other DLCs that you can play without feeling like you're being punished for doing something wrong. Believe it or not, part of the reason I'm making this video is out of respect for the game itself. For a shooter, it has so many strong points that make it a great game. That's why it's such a shame that this thing had to crawl from the depths of hell and stain its legacy. It really sucks how much a single bad entry to a series can ruin that entire series as a whole. Looking back at the time I spent playing, it's all just a fine stream of fond memories until the moment I first played Mad Moxies and from there on the joy is just snuffed out. So look, what I'm trying to say is Borderlands is a great game and if you're interested, definitely pick it up. But if you're planning to start this DLC with the intention of finishing it, you're a fool and may God have mercy on your soul.